Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. Our guest is going to be Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. He is the beef extension veterinarian here in Kansas, and we're going to talk about something that can affect everybody's herd, that's tetanus. Stay tuned after these messages, and I hope that you enjoy our show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Dr. Tarpoff, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Folks, Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, he is the beef extension veterinary specialist here at Kansas State University. Covers all things beef cattle that has to do with medicine, uh, preventative medicine, cow, calf, stalker, feedlot. Uh, pleasure to have you back at Kansas State. It's a pleasure to be back. Yep. Doc Tarpoff has some practice experience and he has a lot of real world experience of things that uh, a lot of times we don't maybe get around uh, the university system, but uh, we're very fortunate to have you at Kansas State. And, and uh, AJ, today we're going to talk about tetanus. And it's something that, that while we, we all go in and get vaccinated ourselves for it, we, we don't think about it a lot of times in our, in our beef cattle. Well, tetanus, it, it, it can happen in beef cattle. It can happen really in all species. And, and depending on how we manage it and control the risk of it is if we'll ever actually see the disease or not. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when we start to think about te- what, what is tetanus? I mean, just let's start out with well, what tetanus, causes it. What causes it? It's a bacteria. Mm-hmm. Okay. This bacteria is a little bit different than most of the diseases we deal with because it lives in the soil. It really lives in all soil all around, all, all around the world. And what's special about it is that it actually, the bacteria itself forms a spore to protect itself. And it can live for a long, long time in the soil itself. So this is the same, this is, this is clostridium. This, this is, is clostridium. This is, this is a clostridium species. So it's very similar to black leg and, and other forms of clostridium that are going to be living in the soil and producing these spores. spores. So, so let's say, so the calf can get it from grazing, they can get it from the environment. Uh, do, is it, do they ingest it or how? Well, they can ingest it, but it doesn't cause any illness. It flows through the digestive tract, no big deal. Uh, what happens is we need an active infection or some type of wound. If we have compromised skin, the skin is a great shield to protect the body from all the outside elements. When we have compromised in that skin, that's when we end up having issues and what the, the spore comes in and it, it forms an oxygen free environment and then that's where the bacteria can thrive and cause an issue. Gotcha. So when we're when we're talking about tetanus, it's most everybody's likely got it in the soil and their whether it's a grow yard or their pastures or mm-hmm. whatever. But once you create the type of wound that'll set this up, that's when we have an issue. Absolutely. And when and a lot of different things can cause it. Uh, some of our production practices like castration, dehorning, uh, after calving, if we have metritis issues with the cow, we can run into some of these issues. So we always have uh, something leading up to leading to clinical signs of tetanus. We, we have an active wound uh, that is compromised, and then that's when the spore gets in and causes an issue. Yep, and when you say castration, obviously banding is the one, the type of castration that that is the one we think about the most. 
typically the, the banding castrations, uh, it, it, it is more prevalent than actually a, a cutting castration. Uh, we also see it with uh, different types of banding around a horn or on a tail, any of those other issues when we have compromised tissue that's, that's starting to die. And that's where, that's where we run into the issue. Perfect. Well, let's take a break. Let's go to commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, the Kansas State Beef Cattle Extension Veterinarian. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More right after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Kathleen Morris is the fifth generation of a Texas ranching family, and her mother is a veterinarian, so it was natural for her to choose a career in veterinary medicine. Her main interests are in equine dentistry and podiatry, but she also loves working with small ruminants and livestock. After graduation, she will spend the summer working in Alberta and then return to Texas to work full-time in a mixed practice. Some call it a come-from-behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune. Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Horn flies are a nuisance in a production loss, so getting rid of the problem is important. What I like about the vet gun is you don't have to go out there weekly to treat them with a topical fly applicant. It has some duration, it lasts, you see the increase in weight gain, it just works. I've used it in our 1500 cow-calf operation and it makes me more confident in saying, hey, this product's going to work on your operation too. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're at Kansas State University, and where Dr. Tarpoff serves as the beef extension veterinary specialist for the entire state of Kansas. And we're very lucky to have him on board here at Kansas State University. Uh, to, to work. We've worked together before. Mm -hmm. We've worked together when you're in practice and, and it's great to have you here to, to work together again, AJ. And, and so let's talk about tetanus. So when, when I walk out, what's, what am I going to see if I have a calf that's succumbing to tetanus? Okay. Well, with tetanus, there's varying degrees and it, and it kind of progresses from one to the other. Uh, when early signs of tetanus is really just a generalized stiffness of the animal. They're not moving quite right. They're really stiff all over. Um, and as that progresses, uh, the, the bacteria itself, once we have the infection, releases a neurotoxin. And it can ascend up the body where they can, they get very rigid. And they like to call it a, a sawhorse stance. Gotcha. Well, and when they are sawhorse, their legs are fully extended. They're very reluctant to move. Uh, it's, it's quite something to see. Yep. And then when they fall over, they'll, they'll maintain that stance. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a reason why we call it lockjaw uh, instead of tetanus. Well, the, the body actually starts to develop these horrible spasms. And what, one of the early signs is the muscles in the jaw. And where they won't be able to eat, they won't be able to open their jaw, the spasms in the muscles just contract that jaw extremely hard. Yep. Um, they can be pretty... Uh, uh, they can be stimulated by noise too. Mm -hmm. Noise and light. Okay. So if something surprises them, you walk past an animal, it, they almost have a panic attack. They get extremely rigid. And if you look at their eyes, they get, actually the third eyelid of the eye comes over and they may fall over. You know, it's not something we, we like to see, but, but you can actually help differentiate whether or not it's tetanus or some other neuro disease by that by the spasms 
by the third eyelid coming over and the excitability, uh, th those are very indicative of tetanus. Yep. So, so just so there's different ways we can find them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe too late when we find those, but you start looking then backtracking through the ones that have the less severe signs? Absolutely. We'll have much better treatment success in the early stages of the disease. That, that's always key. If they're already down, they're flat out, they're in the super rigid stance on the ground, uh, we're not gonna, it, it's almost a little bit too late for those animals. Yep, those are the ones that are gonna have, have very uh, grave prognosis, yep. but, but if caught earlier, we can treat the others. So let's, let's uh, kind of move forward and take a break and come back after the break and we'll talk about treatments. Sounds great. Thanks for being here. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Likasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA Tip of the Day is proper alignment with the trailer and the chute. It's really important that when cattle arrive at a feedlot or when the cattle are being loaded out for shipping, that trucks, when they come in uh, to back up to the loading facilities, is that when they come in, they're square with the alley in which they come in. Sometimes we have trucks where they're six inches off or 12 inches off, and what that creates is it creates an option to bruise cattle and uh, uh, shoulder bruises, flank bruises, uh, any of those types of things. The other uh, uh, injury that can occur in that instance is, is if we get a leg that falls off or if there's too much space between the loading dock and the truck where a foot can slip through and we can fracture a leg. So the, the most important tip is make sure that we're square, make sure that we're flush when we come back and that everything is in line for cattle to properly load into the truck. And that's your tip of the day. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're at Kansas State University where Dr. Tarpoff is the state beef extension veterinarian and is covering our state, covering well, more than our state, works nationally with the Academy of Veterinary Consultants, American Association of Bovine Practitioners, and many producers uh, in the United States and Canada. And, and Dr. Tarpoff, um, pleasure to have you here. We're talking about tetanus, and we've got through that it's a clostridium species that we can set up with, with the different types of skin wounds. Mm -hmm. um, 
basically it likes an anaerobic environment, an environment there, that there's no oxygen. And then when we find these animals, they're, they're in rigor or, or the locked jaw, the, they're super excitable. We know we have tetanus on our premise. We know we have an issue with tetanus here in these calves. Can we treat them? We do have some treatment. It's not always 100% successful, but we can, we can treat these animals. Uh, what's available uh, for treatment of tetanus, we actually have an antitoxin. I brought up earlier that, yep. that there's actually a neurotoxin that tetanus releases. Uh, we actually have an antitoxin to help combat that. Now, since it is a bacterial disease, we can actually use antibiotics to treat this illness as well. So when, during treatment, usually it's penicillin, antitoxin, but we, have, we also have to think about what initiated it. Where's that deep penetrating wound? You know, is it a banding issue? So we treat the wound, we treat systemically with antibiotics, and we use antitoxin. Gotcha. So um, obviously it's a bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you can kill the bacteria with the, with the antibiotic. And then the antitoxin is the same as, is something that's going to go in and clean up the toxins given off by the spores. Correct. Gotcha. And so, so we're going to kill the bacteria with the antibiotic. We're going to clean up the toxins with the antitoxin. And then we're going to clean up the source of the infection by the wind initial wound, wound yeah. debridement and, mm -hmm. and things to that nature. So when these animals, you know, after we treat them, are there other, you know, things that we want to do to help provide recovery for these types of animals? We do need to provide extra care for these animals. Uh, some things that, that, that it is recommended. The stimulus, they, they still get greatly excited. Some of these animals you actually give, uh, some of it is painful. So, so sometimes analgesics, uh, something to keep, you know, kind of decrease the amount of stress on that animal. We put them in a dark environment to gotcha. keep the sun, sunlight away from them. And these animals are prone to go down, okay? So we need to be careful with the environment they're in, that there's nothing they can hurt themselves in the environment that they are in. Uh, think about bedding, some place that they're extremely comfortable we, we will have better treatment, treatment success if we take these extra steps. Gotcha. So antibiotic, antitoxin, going to treat the wound, get them in a dark place, bed them, and then if they go down, we're going to treat them just as any other compromised animal that's a downer. Absolutely. And if they've been down for extended periods of time, we need to think about water. Okay, this animal needs water, it needs feed, and we may have to supplement some of those things for this animal. Perfect. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about preventing tetanus in your herd. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. I'm Jackie Moore, Joplin Regional Stockyards, Joplin, Missouri. You know, we're a family-oriented business here at Joplin Stockyards, being in business here since 1977. When I was 18 years old, I went to work at the stockyards, and through the years, we've developed a facility that will sell over 400,000 cattle a year in, a, in the four-state area here. Uh, we're big on family. We're big on promotion of our own products, and I think when you talk about the beef checkoff and those kind of things, we've got to promote what we do as an industry worldwide and globally. You know, it ain't like it used to be. Where it's all regional, it's global. Going forward from here for the next generation, I think it's really important that we, we keep people informed of the quality of beef we're raising and the different things that we're doing to strive to make this a better industry. And I really think that with the beef checkoff's help form, we can keep everybody on the same track to let them know that we're raising a safe, good product every day of our lives. You know, I think as we move forward, I think, you know, the beef checkoff dollar, you know, we're going towards the research make these ready-made beef product meals, you know, and I think that's going to be a crucial part of our business as we move forward to be able to reach those people in the inner cities and in the suburbs. You know, the mom gets home after work at five and she wants something quick and easy to fix her kids. And, you know, I think these ready-made bills that uh, the beef checkoff is uh, putting the money in for the research is going to be a crucial part of this business as we move forward. I think that we need to put a little bit of the money that we've earned in this business back into this industry 
from my standpoint, looking to the future of the generations of my sons, my grandchildren, and those type people that we got to promote what we do. That from the beef checkoff standpoint, they did a wonderful job of doing that over the years for the next generation. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, thanks for watching today on Doc Talk. I'm here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, who's our state beef extension veterinary specialist here at Kansas State University, and, and we've talked about everything. Now we're, it's time to prevent tetanus, and it's, we have good vaccines. We have excellent vaccines for tetanus. And the biggest thing, uh, tetanus, if we can prevent it, it's a cheap vaccine, it's very effective, that's a step that we need to take. Okay, so now we get kind of caught up in this antitoxin versus toxoid. Uh, and so what's the difference between an antitoxin and a, and a toxoid? Okay, so the, the toxoid is, you know, little, it, you actually build immunity against that particular path, pathogen. Yeah. Antitoxin, is really effective after the infection happens and we need to bind up that toxin. Okay, so to prevent the infection, we actually want the toxoid, not the antitoxin. So this is something that we're building immunity into the future. Antitoxin will not, not uh, build immunity into the future. And one way that I describe it is we give the toxoid to the animal and it will produce its own antitoxin in the blood. Correct. The antitoxin, if you're gonna give that, if you buy it, it's expensive. And you're going to give that because the animal doesn't have time to make its own. To make its own, we're going to give it to the animal. So we usually use the vaccine. We give a little bit of the toxoid, which is an injection of the toxin. It produces its own antitoxin. Yep, that, that, that's exactly the way we do it. And then it, it comes down to timing. Yep. You know, when, when do we actually vaccinate these animals? Uh, I, li I like to get people to uh, vaccinate for tetanus the first time we handle these cats whether that be branding, uh, castration, dehorning. If we're gonna be doing those practices and we already have the animal caught, we need to get a tetanus toxoid in, into that animal. Yeah, and I always wondered, you know, sometimes people only use uh, the toxoid, the tetanus toxoid when they ban cattle, but it won't hurt them to give it to them. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, and I don't, I, I guess I wonder why people don't use the, the tetanus toxoid or the, the, the you know, the eight way uh, clostridium, the seven-way black leg plus tetanus, routinely. And uh, I, I like to re routinely use it in the cow herd. I, I do like to use it on, on every animal. I think every animal needs at least one tetanus toxoid at least once in its life. I like to uh, boost those animals annually. Yeah, and horses are extremely sensitive to tetanus. They get tetanus by just looking at a piece of wire <laughs> on the fence. So we get we have tetanus almost every time we, mm -hmm. we handle horses as well. Right. 
cattle aren't nearly as sensitive, but it can be a big problem. Now, horses and sheep are much more susceptible to tetanus, uh, but cattle still can definitely get tetanus. Perfect. Well, we're going to uh, wind down the show, but uh, thanks for being on the show. If you don't mind, you know, you can you can look up Dr. Tarpoff on the, the internet if you need a speaker for a meeting or, or something that you're heard. Uh, give him a call. He's a great veterinarian, great resource here in the state of Kansas and, and abroad. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being at K-State. Thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. It's been my pleasure to be uh, around you today. If you have a, a question and want to know more about the show, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.